Hi there! When you want to rotate an object along axes that are not aligned with that object, it can be quite difficult to figure out how to do that. You have to map from one space to another and maybe yet to another and multiply a bunch of rotations in just the right order and it can be quite hard to get the rotations and the order right. I want to show you a trick that makes such tasks much easier. Here is a character whose head I want to tilt. I want to be able to roll the head around the blue axis, so along the blue circle segment. And I also want the head to be able to look up down around the red axis, so along the red circle segment. The problem is, when I select the head bone, which moves the head, you can see that the head bone's axes are not aligned with the head's forward look direction. If the head bone's axes were aligned with the direction the head is facing, then I could solve our problem quite easily. I would just add the angles that I want, so the roll angle or the up-down angle, to the head bone's local Euler angles. But in this case, it's more complicated and I chose the character to be more complicated so I can show you how in such quite complex situations you can make your life much easier with a trick. To show you the trick, first let's understand what a transform's rotation does. Let's take a look at this scene. The barrel is a child of the cannon. Currently both are aligned along the global space. As you can see by the blue forward direction of this gizmo, which is attached to the barrel, pointing the same way as the global blue forward direction. When I select the barrel, you see here the barrel transforms local rotation. Since currently the barrel is aligned with the parent and the global space, the forward vector the representation of the forward vector in the barrel's space is 0, 0, 001 because this is the forward direction and this is also this vector's representation in the parent space 0, 0, 001. What happens now if I rotate the barrel upwards? Like so, you can see it has changed to minus 90 in the X component. Now the forward direction of the barrel, the blue one, is pointing the same way as the green up direction of the global space and also the up direction of the cannon. Now in the barrel's local space, that vector's mathematical representation is still 0, 0, 001, because relative to the barrel it's still pointing the same direction, but in its parent space, in the canon space, it's pointing upwards. So in canon space, its representation is 0, 1, 0. The same as the green up vector. The barrel transform's local rotation does the following computation. The local rotation is applied to a vector expressed in local space and the result is a vector expressed in its parent space. So this vector, which in the barrel's um, local space is this, becomes this. So if we insert the numbers, the barrel transforms local rotation given here we just insert the numbers from here into this formula and apply that to the forward vector. And um, you can see that we get the up vector, which is expressed in parent space. So now comes the first part of the trick. Let's write it explicitly like that. The barrel transform local rotation is stored in a new variable which is named according to a specific scheme. It explicitly shows from which space it maps into which other space. With this notation, we can rewrite the above like that. The vector which is expressed in local space gets applied the rotation to it 
and the result is in parent space. The reason we write parent from local instead of local to parent is because we multiply the local vector on the right side, so where the local part of the notation is. And we want the notation to tell us if you multiply quaternions of vectors on the left or right side, what space they have to be in. So parent from local tells us that it expects something in local space on its right side and the result of the multiplication is in parent space. With this notification we can write this. You take a vector in local space, you multiply parent from local on the left side and the result will be in parent space. So we can multiply another quaternion on the left side which expects something in parent space on its right. And the result will go from local to parent and from parent to global. So in end effect from local to global. So this is the same as if I replaced those two quaternions with a single quaternion which just goes directly from local to global. In fact, Unity stores all rotations as local rotations in the form parent from local. And when it needs a global rotation of an object, it does a chain of multiplications like this throughout the hierarchy. This global from local rotation is actually accessible via the transforms rotation field. It maps from local space to global space. So with this notation, when multiplying two quaternions, the notation sort of lets you cancel out the space in between which both quaternions have in common. So it's a bit like multiplying fractions. A divided by C is the same as A divided by B times B divided by C because the B's cancel each other out. With this notation our head tilt task becomes much easier. We want to write the script that actually applies the tilt function to the Minotaurus head. I have started the script here. So far it's pretty empty. I just store the two angles that I want as parameters and I assign the head bone so we can manipulate the head forms rotation. We want to apply the head tilt in the late update function so once the animation is done moving the head. The final result of the head tilt function will be to apply a new rotation to the head bone. Let's write it here. So the head bone's new rotation will be a quaternion that we still have to generate. We already know that the rotation function maps from the transforms local space into the world space. So I have named this variable according to the, our scheme. At the start of late update, we store the headbone's current rotation after the animation is done applying its thing in our variable. Then we'll do something to this variable and at the end we store the modified rotation back into the headbone. Our goal is to apply a rotation in head forward space because in head forward space the rotation is easy. It's just a rotation along the two main axes of the head forward space. We can write it like that. The rotation is just the Euler rotation around the first axis and the third axis. And I name it like that because this rotation is applied in head forward space and it leaves the result in head forward space. So I have head forward on the left as well on, as on the right side. To get into head forward space where we can apply this rotation we just use our notation and our rules to split this rotation, like so. As you re recall, we can cancel out 
the things in between. So the result is indeed from headbound space to world space, as is expected for our quaternion. So the question is, where do we get those things from? Once we have them, we know that in between those two, we are in head forward space and we can apply our rotation there. But let's first find out how we get them. The right one, head forward from head bone, is always the same because when you move the bone, the head moves with it. So we can compute this relationship once in the awake function and use it in update afterwards. We'll do this in a minute. The left one can be split like this. World from head forward is just the product from world from head bone times head bone from head forward. We do have this already. To get this, we notice that this is just the reverse of one we already have, namely of this. And the thing with quaternions is that you can just get the reverse by taking the inverse. So if you have B from A, you can get A from B by just taking the inverse of the first one. Okay, so let me just inline this expression in this place, like so. We can delete this and to make it easier to read. Let's, let's split it into multiple lines. Okay, here we already have from head bone to head forward space. And this one is applied in head forward space. So in between those two, we are in head forward space, so to speak. And that's where our rotation goes. Let's insert it here. And we are almost done. All that is left to do is to compute those two things. Let's store them as fields, like so. And let's compute them in the awake function. To compute the first one, we can do a split again, like so. Because those two we can actually derive. World from head bone is just this. It's head bone rotation. As you recall, the rotation field takes something in local space, so in head bone space, and maps it into world space. And head forward from world can be computed like this. It's the inverse of world from head forward. And world from head forward, when we start playing, is the same as world from character, because in the beginning, the head forward is directed along the characters forward. So we can do this. World from head forward is world from character. And world from character is just the transform rotation. So because this script is on the character. So we computed this one. We still need to compute this one. And as we noted, it's just the inverse of this. So we can just say head bone from head forward is the inverse of head forward from head bone. Let's enter play mode and see our code working. This is the default animation playing. Okay, let's try roll angle. Okay, let's try it when he's looking to the right. Okay, seems to be working. And now up down. Up down. Wait for yes. And up down. Okay, seems to be working. Now let's see our code in action. You walk up to the guy and you say, Excuse me, good sir, is this the path to the dungeon where many a Unity developer has perished trying to rescue the fair maiden? Mm -hmm. I will set out this way then. Where others failed, I shall succeed. Mm -hmm. 
For you see, I have watched a video and my unity foo has become stronger. I now know how to transform between local spaces and I wield the power of quaternions. <laughs> okay, you get the point. Yeah, that's the video. I hope you found the trick helpful. If you know other tricks like that that makes your life as a unit developer easier, please share them in the comments. See you!